Hello and welcome back to the season finale of Leveled Up the Podcast. Yeah. Woo! We've saved the best till last. Probably shouldn't say that, but here we are. I'm your host, Sean Owen, and thank you for joining us for season one final episode. On today's show, we have the beauty, George Kerr and Paris. Hello. Hello. Beautiful two models with me. Welcome to the show. How are you both? Good. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. I think you're the first one that's actually asked Paris. Oh. Appreciate that. But no, I'm good. I'm enjoying getting out of 2020. It's all about 2021 now, isn't it? It's just weird because I feel like 2019 was like so good for me, like in every way. And then it was just, I think it's the same for everyone, but that was a year it like picked up like everything and I was just like going out a lot and it's just a sociable year for me and then from that to just being locked down but it's yeah. everyone on the planet is like the same so it's sort of easier to bet I couldn't actually agree more 20, 2019 was actually my funnest year as well I think mm. I went on like nine holidays just out constantly Love that. and then 2020 it's just like extreme other side of it mm. so have you still been able to work or has it been a bit dry because i know obviously in the it's industry been dry. yeah <laughs> it's been so Sorry. dry it, it has been, been dry it's been the driest <laughs> It's been dry. Like, <laughs> why are you laughing, Paris? Paris is recently She's moved laughing because me and her always say dry to each other. We've just got a personal joke oh. about the word dry, and yeah. I've just said dry. Because ah. a photographer, literally, we, he was there eating a dessert, and it was dry. But the way he, he always said just it, says it's dry. Dry. So that's what we always say to each other now. <laughs> okay, mm. cool. I like that. I'm like in, into your personal joke now. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Everything's dry. Yeah. If it's dry. 2020 yeah. is dry. 2020 was the driest year of my life. And, you Hopefully, know. Hopefully, uh, 2021, that was going to sound so bad. I'm not going to say it. It's wet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're going to say, right? I, I was going to mine. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm I leaving. knew that having you two to chat to was going to be fun. And it's only just started. I'm leaving already. You're leaving already. She's going. Bye. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, yeah, 2020 was dry. But how did you actually cope with quarantining, lockdown? Obviously, Paris, you well, both of you are models now. Was Obviously, you come from the studio to home. So how was that? Did you sort of have to adjust your apartments, your living spaces into like home studios? Yeah, literally. So like when we went into first lockdown, I was living in like a student house in Kentish Town. And... I had this tiny, it was the smallest room in the house. It was a house of 16 girls. No. And I had the box room. And I literally like, if you sh- if you saw the <laughs> setup, like I've probably got photos of it. Oh On my, my God. Instagram, it just does not look like I'm in this tiny box room. Well, you smashed it then, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it did really yeah. well. But I was like, wow, I can't believe that. Mm. That's that's so actually quite impressive to be in a box room. I actually I- had a brand over to shoot in my house as well. Did and, you? Yeah, we did like it was an accessories brand, but we actually did brand content wow. in my tiny bedroom. In that box room. Yeah, it was so tight. Wow, look at you now though. I mean, you've glowed completely up and you've recently moved to Manchester. Yes, yeah. So tell us about that. Why did you move to Manchester? Because there's a lot going on up there, isn't there? There's loads going up there. I've got more friends there. Like, I do have a lot of friends in London, but honestly, like I'm just sick of like it's like I went to my friend's house before a barbecue and it took me like an hour and 45 minutes. And I was In just London. Like, yeah. yeah. And then there was one morning I was on the way to a modelling job and I'd been in the taxi for one hour 15. I was like, this ain't it. <laughs> it ain't. And you know when you're on, the, on your way somewhere and you're getting really hot mm. and the Uber driver's driving a bit funny. That was funny. me today. Was, was it me you today? today? You had a mare. I was sweating. Oh. I was like full on sweating. Well, do you know what? I'll tell you something that I've recently started doing. Call me bougie, but I've recently started getting Uber comforts. And do you know what? It's worth <laughs> every penny. They ask you what temperature you want. Do they? Yeah, all the Uber drivers are like five star. So they're like, they know what they're doing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it was worth it. So maybe try an Uber comfort next. Next time. I didn't even know this was a thing. I Neither did Uber I. Works. Is it just the in between? I think they've brought a new one out. Yeah, Uber Comfort, and I literally just I had a whale of a time. Amazing. <laughs> the guy was lovely. We were just having a nice little chat at five o'clock this morning. Oh my god. I know. So give that a go, babe. <laughs> so, go. what I'm have with... you guys been up to to keep yourself busy and entertained <laughs> apart from working? Obviously, you've been working from home. <laughs> Yeah. And you've been working from home, I'm guessing, as well, G.I., with your yeah. modelling and stuff. What else have you been up to? Um, Obviously, we haven't been able to it go It sounds out. bad, but I just couldn't even tell you what I've spent this year doing. No. Did you, yeah. did you do the whole banana bread hype and all of no. last year? I you did the, it. I bought the banana bread ready, ready made. Oh, okay. <laughs> you did it the cheat way. I did it the cheat way because I'm just not about, like, 
Do you know what? I actually love cooking, but I make more like savory stuff. I never make. You love a good pasta, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. okay. Nice. I like so, yeah, pasta. She's always cooking making and pasta like and stuff. Oh, I like that. Because you guys are friends, aren't you? Yeah. So, how did you two meet? We How met, did we meet? We met at that Christmas party. <laughs> Do you remember you were like, oh, I didn't realize you were that. No, we need to go into that. What Christmas party did you meet? Yeah, it was different. the 66 my Christmas party a couple of years ago. Basically, I ended up in an ambulance. We don't need to go. <laughs> right, okay. That's, you know what? Standard Christmas party procedure. Yeah. There's always one. <laughs> but no, so actually, when we properly got talking was after the HLD brunch where I met you. Yeah. So we got chatting there. And, yeah. And then there was like a group of us all went like out to the nail salon. And, nice. Yeah. yeah. I think it's really nice because obviously we all work with HLD management to the listeners like it's an amazing management isn't it it's very yeah. girl women empowering and we all stick together and I think it's nice when you make bonds with people yeah. and then you just you get close because you sort of get it didn't you I think yeah. sometimes when you make relationships and friendships with people that aren't in the industry do you find they don't really understand and it is harder for friends to get it and it's sometimes easier just to be like oh I've got a girl that's in the industry she's also a model we can take each other's content but it's also yeah. like a, because me and Paris it's not like a lot of models I feel like obviously everyone's personality is different um, yeah. I think we've got a lot of similar interests other than that anyway like music taste and we both just like eating food and listen to Vibes Cartel <laughs> yeah. do you both like Vibes Cartel <laughs> okay we I'm trying it. to envision um, your night in pasta I, took her, I used to take her to like work when she was in London she moved to Manchester now but like so the ghetto like oh um, my god this ghetto she she's just plays. I love it it's vibes cartel oh, she's it's sure. actually so good though I remember the is first it? time she took me there Got and I was like what is this she was late and I was texting I was like mate this is so ratchet <laughs> actually after I had a few drinks and stuff it was almost outdoors like in winter I was like what but yeah, once we'd had a few drinks and stuff, you got the vibes on, I said, like, okay, I love it here. You just, yeah, it's, I feel like there's places like that in the world where you go and it's like, okay, this is awful, I get me out of here. Then you have a couple of drinks. Rough. I'm yeah. not really into like bougie places so much. Like obviously for events and stuff, I can do it, but if it's like for me picking somewhere where I'm going to enjoy I wouldn't pick a bougie place yeah. really so that's really interesting because I, I think it's nice to be fair to have a bit mm. of a break mm. like my best friend who I live with she's not into bougie-ness at all and she'll just be like she goes to the shisha bars as well and I'll be like no I don't want to go there anymore and then I get there and I have the best night yeah. you know no one's caring what they look like everyone's just relaxed and you get in at God yeah. knows what time in the morning. You just go in trainers. Yeah, literally. I so, feel like I like to do a bit of both. Like you like getting a bit. To be fair, I don't even really go out like clubbing or drinking or anything like that anymore. But like, well, you can't, um, can you? You can't. No, but just even before lockdown, like I kind of like when I moved well, to London, I just kind of have a substantial meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but apparently we're low key thriving. <laughs> yeah, literally. Like we just want to go for food. We don't care about going out, being in the club, nothing. Like, yeah. Well, there you go. I think it's nice to go for like dinner and drinks but definitely trainers is the vibe so i want to talk to you guys both a little bit about how you started modeling because obviously i'm sure i mean i'm very interested in it and a lot of our listeners are gonna really want to know the goss how do you start to become a model how do you become a model where did it come from have you always wanted to be a model paris yeah so i've always wanted to be a model and um a fashion designer as well that's like my two things i always want to do um, my first ever shoot was when I was one. One? Yeah, when I was oh, wow. one. My mum got me signed. I think I got spotted in Newcastle. My mum got me signed to an agency up there, um, but give it up quite quick. Cause yeah. you'd like, well, I don't know if you know what it's like in modeling, but in the kind of industry we're in, you know what it's like. You'll yeah. have last minute kind of castings or you'll have early call times. And yeah. When you're a single mum with no car, that's quite hard to just it's keep It's really that intense. Up. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so I didn't do it throughout school, but like I kind of um, would do little things here and there. Like, you always wanted to. And then when I was 17, I did like some hair modeling. And then um, after college, I was working in the club. Uh, in Newcastle and I got spotted again by the agency that I was signed with when I was little baby oh wow that's yeah. really nice I didn't really get any work through them but that kind of like started off and I was like right I'm gonna go to Manchester I'm gonna go to do London because yeah. that's where the work's at Manchester and London in the yeah. UK anyways 100% yeah because Manchester's like they call it the mini London mm. right yeah well that's why I've moved there it's, it's actually like the more... mini London without all of the commuting around yeah well I've even considered moving up to Manchester as well but 
who knows I'm a bit of a I'm a little bit of a city girl yeah we'll be neighbours that'll be fun yeah what about you Gio have you always wanted to be model model modeling I actually did but I've had because I'm a Gemini I've had like about a million things I've wanted to do right so I still I grow out of things I used to do ballet professionally as well oh did you that's interesting so I went to full on ballet school did worked in companies and everything and then one day I was just like I don't want to do this anymore it's a lot switched but I did want to always do modeling because my mum was a model (laughs) and I've got a little just she was just always just so good looking and like everything and then like I just kind of looked up to her and whatever and I just always wanted to like do what she did and she actually did get me as well like I was a kid and I got a job but she couldn't take me because she found out she was pregnant and everything. Just so that situations stopped. happen. Situations yeah. happen. But That's she so said lovely. to me recently, she's like, obviously, if you did a lot like as a kid, maybe you wouldn't have like the the energy for stuff that you have now. Because I always wanted to, I always wanted to work when I was little, which is weird for a little kid. But I was like, not a kid, kid. You just wanted to grow so up. So I was and... like that kid that used to hang around with the, like the adults and just chat. <laughs> you were that strange child that was, that was always just a strange conversation. <laughs> a strange kid. Like all the all the teachers would say to my mum, like your daughter is weird. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, you've got an amazing personality. It's very unique because you are fun and you're, but you're very as well. You know, like open, but you're reserved and. You're yeah. like, you know what I mean? You're quite, you're a cool girl. I remember meeting you at HLD and I never thought you was going to be, People you know. People say that to me. I think on like Instagram, people think I'm going to be like either stuck up or like bougie or something and literally the opposite. Yeah, like I, I need to be more bougie yeah. if anything. Like, Even my boyfriend no. said that to me when we first met. He was like, yeah, after I saw your Instagram, like, I thought you were going to be this, that, the other, but I'm pleasantly surprised. You're both like, lovely. Thanks. Honestly, I think that that is the thing though, isn't it? I think there's so many girls in the industry that are, a little bit more reserved and you know it can be a little bit come across a little I bit stuck like up or whatever but you just gotta do you babe i'm very no i'm actually shy people when i say it to people are like no you're not shy but i'm actually a shy person i know what you mean like, you're shy but you're not in the I'm same shy, sense but i'm not like i'm insecure if that makes sense but then i'm not like i can be in on a shoot i can be out there more but i feel like that's not me as a person that's like a job to you right yeah, or like I can do something and that's someone different. So, yeah, yeah. so people think you're so confident because you're doing this in bikinis or you're doing this and this. But I'm like, no, because then personally I'm quite reserved in other ways. Like yeah. to meet you straight on, it's it's different. It's definitely yeah. a different environment. You know, like everyone is different and it's really interesting to meet so many girls and talk about it because I think you know, our listeners will probably be thinking like, how do I become a model? I bet you two get asked it all the time on Instagram, right? How do I get here? I, I share tips all the time because I just think like, I don't know, when I was first starting out and really like first starting to try to make this my actual occupation, not just a hobby. I don't really feel like I got any advice from anyone. It was yeah. kind of like, there was a couple of girls who I knew personally who, who would kind of be like, oh yeah, like maybe go to this agency or Pointing you sort of in maybe the right shoot way. with this photographer. But like, Loads of people do message me, so I'll just share tips because I just think there's room for everyone. Like, oh, yeah. It, mm. You helping someone else isn't going to take away from you. Definitely, and I think, yeah, that is... That, I, I feel do, like that's quite a... Yeah. It is, but I feel like... Um, I feel like I've kind of learnt my lesson with other people, not in a bad way, but I've helped a lot of people get yeah. to what they're doing. And there's, there is a level where I feel like you're either like a you either help people or they help you. Like, I feel like if you help people, they're more reluctant to ever do anything when they're in the position to. Mm. So I've helped people and then, like, they've they've had an opportunity to maybe help me with something and haven't. So you just have to kind of help people but not take it too far where you know that it's not going to be mutual. I don't really feel like there's a right way to go about how do you do modelling. I feel like it's where you are at the time and everyone gets into things in a different way. 100%, definitely. And I do feel like it's being persistent. Like, we've all had rejections, a lot of rejections. Oh, definitely. I mean, I've looked up to some massive models before and I've been shocked to see, like... I turned up at this, not me personally, but the girl I was looking up to, do you know uh, Sophia Jamora? Mm, Obviously everyone knows Sophia Jamora. She's absolutely beautiful. And she was putting on her TikTok that she said that everyone asked me how to become a model. And she said, I've got turned away. And you know, we just think, 
oh my goodness, you got turned away. Yeah. And it's yeah, like, because you think like, Sophia, like, she's stamping you. kind of like, I can relate to that in Paris can as well. Like, that with modelling, you get kind of like your skinny model and then you get your curved model. But if you're kind of a nice body shape in the middle, you're not put into a category. So don't get me started on there. <laughs> yeah, because obviously you're not. That's so, I can so imagine true. With, with Sophia, like, obviously she's just got an amazing body, but she doesn't fit into like, she's not a size six and she's not a curved model. She's just like a 10. Yeah. Which is she's like, a which, standard to size, me, that, which, which is which is similar to me, but obviously I think we've pretty much got like the same measurements. But if most people in the world are like, you, there's more tens than there are sixes, so to me it doesn't make sense. Do you know sure. what it doesn't? And I know Paris. That's such a good topic to bring up, Gio, because I think you know it is so true. And I know Paris. We've spoke briefly before about how when you were a smaller size, mm-hmm. you know, you struggled with model yeah. work. And tell My us a little bit more about that. Popped off, like literally. So obviously, I had jobs. I've had agencies for years. I've been working, but. It's, I've only been able to consider it like this is my full time income. I don't have to do makeup on the side. I don't have to work in a nightclub on the side. Mm. It's only been like that this year, and that's because I've gained weight. Like when I moved to London, I just gained so much weight. Well, you're so lucky that you you gained weight, but you've got like the perfect body. Like no, you are absolutely yeah. beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, come on, everyone, appreciate Kat Paris because yeah. she's next level, <laughs> Thank you. and you've done some mega campaigns this year. Yeah. I mean, well, twenty twenty you did some amazing stuff um and I, th- I find that how does that make you feel you know you've gained weight which i don't know like internally i don't know how you feel you know but you know externally your prize is work and you know n- don't want to say fame but you know you're growing yeah and your, your page is growing but how does that make you feel because it's being a girl you know like it's hard to be accepted when you're curvier yeah. I know now we're definitely going down the right route of being more accepted mm. but I definitely think it's harder isn't it it's bittersweet for me really because I just feel like I'm exactly the same person I was I've got the same energy yeah it's like I've always kind of tried hard and been nice to people and showed up and try to do the job um, but I just didn't really get that much work when I was size 10 to 12. And then I've put all this weight on and I've struggled with kind of like body image and I try to be body positive, but like it is hard sometimes. And yeah. it doesn't matter what weight you are, if you're in the industry or if just anyone really, it can be hard to be body positive. You can't be like loving yourself at all times. Mm. Um, and I've put, I've kind of put this weight on, like I've moved to London, I've been stressed, like, yeah. ha- like I was really struggling with uni and stuff. I've been comfort eating and I've put this weight on. And then like in turn, yeah, my career's popped off and it's been amazing, but it shouldn't, it's almost like it shouldn't have to be that. I it's had crazy, to, like, right? Mm. How it's worked for you. Cause it's like, yeah. you've gone through a hard time. And then I don't know, maybe it's a sign of telling you, you know, you've gone through this hard time, you you've struggled a bit, but now I do like, think it was meant to be. Yeah, for it's meant to be that meant way. To Everything be. happens for a reason. Like, all my hard the hard work I've been putting in behind the scenes, I like, ask Hannah, like she's I mean, she's I've been heard. with me from like the beginning. Yeah, do you I, mean, know what I mean, with, I do hear. Yeah, you've and done she's amazing. been on the phone with me. I've been crying. And I've like quit modeling. I'm I'm retiring from modeling. I'm not doing <laughs> it anymore. And I always come back to it because it's like what I've always what wanted you to do. do. Yeah, but yeah, it's kind of. I don't know, like, I, I'm coming to terms with it, but it's still, like, I just wish that the industry was more representative. Yeah, I mean, a few years ago, there was no such thing as curved models. Yeah. It was just models. And now it's really all about curved models, yeah, right? Yeah, of course, but there should be representation for everyone. The yeah. industry can't claim to be inclusive when there's no representation for in-between girls who I couldn't agree more. absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's like, like with me, like, even now, it's like, I'm going to have to cut back because like that lockdown not even it's not lockdown wait and when I talk to Paris about it I'm just be like I do like food that's the thing <laughs> she loves I mean, honey, anything though. I'm saying like food there's nothing wrong with liking there's food no though like be proud of it like that. it's like it's not normal like most girls would th- that are my size wouldn't feel the need to maybe cut back and have to go mad in the gym but I do because I know that that's that's where I'm going to work more. You have that pressure. Yeah, yeah it is yeah. a pressure. I think we've definitely, we're going in the right direction in the industry, the modelling industry anyway. And I think we've got a long way to go still, yeah. you know. So obviously speaking about that, what state do you think the modelling industry is in at the minute? You know, if you was to think about where you want it to it's, be. It's, it's, it's changed. Is like, it just a mess? I feel like I've been in it for a while now. Like, I don't know if you, like literally how, how long like was I 
doing things for literally just so long now. This is yeah, everything. Yeah, ages. Yeah, but um, like say two years ago, it was models just models and now like influencers are shooting so i feel like it's it's hard now because it's harder for actual models to work because people are using influencers for shoots yeah so yeah. No, it helps you have a profile as well i've talked about this oh, publicly do you think before. it does yeah yeah of course like honestly so before lockdown i was on about 45 50k and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like I've grown so quick. Like I've wow. Just, so now you're on right three hundred and no two hundred and something. Two hundred and something k. That's quick. Yeah, that like, is I've, really quick. I've blown up, but it's because since I dropped out of uni, we was in lockdown. I was like, right, I've got the time now to actually work on my Instagram again. And push it. I already had like a bit of a following, so I knew that like you know, like I was working on Instagram. But because uni was my focus, mm. that kind of fell off. Yeah. But because I dropped out and I had all this time sat in the house, I was like, right, I'm going to do this. You're going to do it? Yeah. So how did you start? It just, it helped so much though. Like it helped me get noticed. It helped me get pushed out there. Brands like it when you've got a following. Like nowadays, if you were to walk into an agency to try and sign up, they ask you like your stats, Mm. you know, what your name is, everything. And they They ask you what your Instagram handle is. And they're like, also how many followers have you got? And that never used to be... I mean, it's been going for a a few years now because I remember like two years ago when when I'd go into an agency and like you had to put your Instagram followers and I thought at the time, like I've got so many followers, I'd about 10K or something. I was like, I'm just going to say. Really? And back then, obviously that was so many. I was two years ago, I had about 400. Back then though, not not a model, but like a model like us. You know what I mean? That was a lot back then. Yeah. Whereas now it's just like the done thing that models have got followers. Like I'm thinking, how has everyone got these followers? Do you know what I mean? They're all fake. It's been a long slog for me. I feel like it's been a long slog. I'm not going to lie. Well, listen, you're both working so hard. And I think, you know, as much as we think that that it's not a great idea that they're asking for your Instagram handles. I think as well, a lot of models are using it as their portfolio. Mm, you know, yeah, their, right, their Instagram are. is their portfolio now. So, and when you say like, where does it go with modelling? The thing is, that it's always been the case that will help people out. Is that same from my um, Instagram when I've just posted say like outfit posts I've taken myself Mm. I'll get more of that when I post more shoot pictures I'll just get more shoots Mm -hmm. so I feel like what people feel you're busiest doing they'll book you for yeah so brands want girls that are busy yeah, so of course, if it looks like look desirable sort if of it thing. looks like you're doing nothing, so it's not even a thing like fake it till you make it. It generally works. Like you have to fake being busy, even oh, you if actually you're not. You have to, you honestly. Have to. Like, no, you there's do. There's times when I used to like I would just buy clothes from whatever brand that I liked and, and just, just put shoot. stuff together. Even now, like and I don't necessarily pretend. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> and send them back. I've done it for test shoots before, but that's what stylists do, isn't it? But yeah. Do you know what? I was actually speaking to an influencer not long ago, and she said she used to go to Selfridges buy like a Louis bag or like no. a designer I write the shoot hustle. it and send it back <laughs> that's, and that's, that's what I thought what if, that's like, wild if you're at that beginning point that's you don't commitment. even have that type of money like what if you do something what if you spill tea on it or something that's I reckless. know could you imagine you the whole the rent's back. gone yeah no I respect the hustle but I also think that's reckless it's one thing ordering that's from reckless like, behaviour quite like a, like a high street brand or whatever and taking photos and stuff but the Louis bag yeah I used to do that whole thing when, when I was a student like back in the day I used to wear some on the night out and take it back yeah oh no I couldn't no I did I was like I'm too yeah, clumsy when I, when that I line, used to go 17 out though, or yeah, something I'm, I'm too clumsy you, spilling cranberry juice on my white dress walking around I mean Paris walked in here to record and she went right I've got lipstick on my top can anyone yeah, see she it she's too clumsy it's too late like now so. yeah like honestly <laughs> it'd be that well, it's not for us my dress is for me <laughs> wear it once only it's not going back no 100% so you obviously said about influencing and stuff how do you manage influencing and modelling and and do you just sort of juggle to see what juggle. works coming it's in? So you literally hard. just juggle. It's just juggling. And yeah. I mean, until last year, I was, I didn't even have management for my Instagram. I was just doing it all myself. So that's even more juggle because I was emailing. And invoices. Invoicing and shooting. And I was actually busier last year as well with everything. And I was busy with shoots. I was busy with posts. And I was busy with the emails. But you just find time. You do. When you're getting coin. <laughs> and I feel like as well, what I've found is <laughs> true. You find time when you're getting coin. Every day she's hustling. Yeah. I think as well, like I was talking to um, Amber from Love Island. Um, she won it, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she's a lovely girl. And she said that where her job in the industry, and you guys will relate to this as well, where we're so busy all the time and it's fun, 
you don't really give yourself time to switch off. Mm. So yeah. you might be laying in bed and replying to a brand quick or mm-hmm. working or, you know, Hannah will ring me at any time of the day, yeah. which is great, but there's no nine to five and there's no weekend chill. And yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes Amber was saying to me that she felt quite overworked. I think, and, yeah. You it, know, dep- it definitely depends what you're like used to because... I don't know with me like I actually love that never switching off thing it's a bit of a weird thing but I know that I I believe in like the universe and you draw things to you and I think the minute you switch off is when it's not I'm not going to say not good because it just sounds unhealthy, but you've always got to be like manifesting in something. Yeah. Even if it's your thought, that's that's working to an extent because you're creating things in your head and whatever. And I've never had a nine to five job in my life. Like I did ballet. I was training for 10 hours a day and all of this stuff. And even then I was like auditioning and sorting stuff out. So I feel like I'm lucky in the way that I've always just been a slog, slogging my guts out, basically. <laughs> well, you two are proper inspirational and it's amazing to chat to you. Honestly, I feel like I'm getting a proper insight into Aww. models. It's amazing, though. You girls are lovely. I feel like I've got a real insight into the model life. Um, and we're going to lighten things up a little bit and play a little game. Okay. I know you two are going to be up for this. Um, so it's a more likely two between you two. Obviously, you two are best friends. Um, and I'm going to ask you who's more likely to do what. Okay. Oh, no. And we're going to answer it, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so... Wait, so how are we answering this? How are we answering this? So we could just decide together, do you think? Okay, yeah, let's, just decide, let's together. decide together. Yeah. Um, okay, so who's most likely to tell a white lie, do you think? <laughs> who's the liar out of you two? What, what, what situation are we in? I think <laughs> any <laughs> situation is a general <laughs> question. I'm just putting it out Who there, wants the most sticky? <laughs> Mate, don't even start. <laughs> so I've pulled so many sickies in my time. All right, Not with modelling, but like when I used to work like, on makeup counters and I think in retail. Both lies. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're both big fat liars. Yeah. That's a great start of both of you. Listen, I'm proud. See, I'm we're honest. honest though. We're honest about it. So how are we even liars? We're not even lying about well, yeah, lying. There you go. It's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? Yeah. We'll just say both. Of Sorry, you my hand was pure sweaty then when you. My hand's sticky. <laughs> sticky. We're just clung together. Are you, right? are you nervous because of the game? No, I'm just always <laughs> sweating. It was like one of them sticky things you put on the mirror when she touched my hand and it peeled off just now. Well, at least you're not That's dry. just our friendship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so most likely to forget people's names. When you're at jobs or I anything, I never remember anyone's forget? name. You There's don't. someone yesterday and I was at a place I go, she used to place I go to a lot. I've known this man for four years. I don't even know his name. You don't know his name. So then you can't call him over. You have to be like, babe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really bad. I had someone at work like that and it literally was so bad. Like I'd worked with this guy for ages and I knew his face, but I just didn't know his name. And I had asked one of the other girls, like he became a manager and I had asked one of the girls, like, what's that guy's name? They were like, are you serious? He's you literally joking? worked here for the longest time. I was like, wait, I had a cousin called, um, <laughs> God, I swear to you, I don't remember his name. Like, it's just so bad. You've forgotten your cousin's name? No, but my mum said to me, Matthew, I think it was. And she was like, oh, Matthew's doing it. I was like, who's Matthew? She's like, your cousin. You just like, forgot his name trying to tell the story about him getting his name. But Georgia is definitely... Yeah, yeah, she wins. You win that one. And it's okay, so not a good name. But I'm you're proud both of, pretty bad at that one as well, right? I can't believe you've forgotten your cousin's name. That's really my funny. My memory's shocking. Yeah. It's not even just people's names, it's just generally. My memory's terrible as well. I feel like I'm getting older and it's getting worse by the day. I feel like it's age and just like No, it's because you've got your you're shoving loads of stuff in your brain. It's like a sponge, your brain. Okay. This is this is science I'm talking to you about right now. <laughs> your brain sucks up all the information that you know, right? Right. And then it just so, can't take any. So when you don't want to know slowly. it, that's why I can't do maths because there's no space for maths in the brain. <laughs> That like, makes total sense. So this all, all the all the stuffs in it, horror movies and that, that I watch, maths just like came out maths my Maths is just gone. So it's gone. And people's names, cousins' names are out as well. Yeah, literally, cousin, I met that cousin about four like, times. I met that like, cousin four times in my life. It literally doesn't count. See you never, Matthew. Yeah. See you later. So most likely to be ready on time. Who takes the longest? I think I'm going to yeah, be ready yeah, yeah. on time. Well, yeah, the, oh, wait, the record time always you got ready to Oh, I'm always late. Do you know? When, I feel like a lot of the time you're just like not oh, ready. I'm one of them annoying people. You're you know, flapping, you know you're one flapping. of them people that text right. people say you're I'm ten flapper. minutes away when really I'm like thirty minutes away. <laughs> Oh, you're one of them. Yeah. When you're laying on the sofa with your feet <laughs> up and you go, I'm five minutes away. You're yeah. one of them. I don't uh, think we can be friends, Gio. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. We're going to give that one to Gio. Okay, last one. Most likely to get drunk quicker. Who's the lightweight? 
Paris. Yeah. I'm surprised by that. Babe. Didn't I tell you this already? On Thursday. You, you compose it well then. Do, no, do you not remember when I was hungover last week when I was moving house? So at least you don't end up in the house. At least you don't end up in an ambulance. True, true. Well, true, to true, be true. true, you ended up in an ambulance and you think you're alive. So you took a night ambulance bit... myself. Oh, <laughs> yeah, she called it herself. I was with her. I was like, you were that drunk. You called the ambulance yeah, yourself. It was on bad. yourself. You called. What it did you bad. say? Hello, I'm really drunk. I, I need help. Remember. Listen, it was just a really <laughs> we bad don't need night. Go into it. We don't. It was just bad. It was that one Christmas party. Yeah, that Christmas party was wild. I never got invited again. I get off the tube the next day every circuit It was bad. I'm not surprised you didn't get invited. Against you. I'm just upset we're not going to be I able to I didn't even have... know you were a lightweight though because you always compose yourself well you're just kind of laughing and singing vibes can't yeah, tell yeah yeah I'm fine <laughs> like I'm not like a bad drunk I mean don't get me wrong I've got some stories but I'm not a bad drunk but literally like Thursday night me and the girls were having drinks together because we were all moving out of the house four drinks and the next day I had a stinking hangover I was in bed till like 2pm oh, had God. to order wagon mamas we're I'm getting rough. older aren't we girls no but you think a hangover's <laughs> bad did anyone tell you about me in Dubai no. I had 10 tequila shots and the next day I couldn't feel my arms. They were they tinging pins and needles. I phoned my mum. I said, mum, I'm having a stroke. You don't understand. Oh, did oh you start feeling God. a bit dead arms? Both arms were dead. I said, I'm having a stroke. Like, I'm going to say my goodbyes because it's just, I'm <laughs> my way. Yeah. That was my goodbye. I've seen this ends. thing on Instagram about like young people having strokes a lot recently. And I was like, this is it. Like, and I said to her, just please just like, I sound, I just said, I just don't want, if, I, if anything happens to me, please just don't be posting pictures of me. Me without my permission on your Facebook, like for sympathy and stuff. Okay, so after 10 <laughs> shots, where did you just get this straight? So and I was just shot. going ahead of myself and she was like, you need to calm down. You need down. to just breathe. It's anxiety, you're having a panic attack, but it happened three times. I think it was something in the tequila. Well, I'm happy that so you're George here today. Yeah. <laughs> so George is the lightweight. Well, I feel like you won that game. You won. Won. Well and we got some amazing stories from it as well. I literally Maybe missed... stay away from the tequila. Oh, I just can't mm. do this. This is why I don't talk. Do you know what? I actually don't think I've ever spoken before on anything oh for good reason oh wow well I'm so <laughs> blessed to have you on it then and yeah. you wrapped it up we saved the best or last as I said but guys we're gonna just chat now at the end and just talk about obviously the podcast is called leveled up and it's all about how you leveled up your mindset you leveled up your life your career anything really whatever's related to you um so I just want to know your futures for 2021 this year and just yeah where you want to see yourself in the future and bits like that really um 2021 I I don't know. It's your year. Come on, Paris. Yeah, of course. Like every year's my year. That's kind of my mindset. Yeah, like, I, I think that. she's the main character. <laughs> yeah, of the main of this character game. of the game. <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess I just want to keep working more. Like level up my mindset in regards to kind of like manifestation and just see where it takes me. Like I think the way my career has panned out, I've already, it's already proved that, you know, if you just keep persistent and keep working hard, good things will come. Definitely. And most of the time, better than you ever imagined. hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you've absolutely smashed it. It's been amazing to see you glow and just shine and achieve. It's good It's good to see good things happen to good people, isn't yeah. it? So, what about you, Gio? <laughs> What's your five-year plan? Five years? I thought it was just 2021. Well, no, just whatever, really. What, I'll what take you... every day to come. <laughs> <laughs> she's taking every day. She's staying away from Coin. the tequila. <laughs> I'm joking. 2021, she's just staying alive. Yeah, yeah. she's just staying, staying alive. She's no, surviving. I've got many... Do you know what it is? I hate telling my things out loud because I feel like it jinxes it. Yeah, I've started doing this as well. Okay. I feel like there's a lot of people so out. Then, oh, then when you haven't achieved it, no one's going to judge you because I don't know if to start with that it was your, your ambition. Okay, so we're going to say that so Gio's is secret I'm and you're going to be shocked at her movements this you're year. Gonna be, you're going to be shocked at my movements. <laughs> Make me mad. <laughs> well, it's been so much fun having you both on. And thank you to our guests, Paris and Gio, today. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in to season one of Leveled Up of the Podcast. Woo! <laughs> We're just getting started. Mark your calendars because season two is coming. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Take care.